Hey guys, shalom and welcome to my channel. My name is Tamar Mizels, and in this video, we're gonna learn a little bit about anti-Semitism. We're gonna give a brief summary of the different types of anti-Semitism and we're gonna try to understand where does anti-Semitism come from? Why do they hate us? Next week, we celebrate the Jewish holiday of Purim where we are joyous because a Holocaust was averted. Haman, the first anti-Semite in the world, wanted to wipe out the entire Jewish nation in one day. Thankfully, in the miracle of Purim, his plans were averted and good was victorious over evil and we were able to defeat our enemies. Unfortunately, anti-Semitism existed back then and throughout the generations and till today, anti-Semitism still exists. In fact, since the beginning of the war against Hamas, anti-Semitic rhetoric and incidents have happened much more around the world in hundreds of percent. For example, I read that in Switzerland, the number of anti-Semitic incidents has quadrupled since the beginning of the war. And the same goes for the United States. They found that this period of the year compared to last year, anti-Semitic incidents have increased by 300%. If we try to understand anti-Semitism and where does it come from? So basically it's based on religion, it's based on Jews being too rich, too poor, too powerful, too segregated, too integrated, too influential and powerful. We control the media. It's because we don't have our own state. It's because we do have our own state. So like you see, it's based on everything and anything. And it almost seems like there's a metaphysical law that Jew hatred exists. You hate the Jew and then the reason sort of follows with you. And the reason could also change throughout the generations. And anti-Semitism has gone through a lot of developments throughout history. And anti-Semitism can be categorized roughly into three categories. The first type of anti-Semitism is religious anti-Semitism, also called traditional anti-Semitism or old anti-Semitism. And this one is based on religion. It started in ancient times, Jews were accused of religious crimes such as blood libels, where they thought that we used Christian blood to commit all these religious uh, acts and we were forced to convert and violent pogroms were held against our communities. We were expelled from European countries. Also during these ancient times, we had professions that were not very favorable. We weren't allowed to be doctors or to hold a lot of professions or to own land. And many of us became money lenders, which is a position that people owe you money and they don't really like you. Or in Poland, for example, we, became, we couldn't own land and we became the tax collectors for Polish noblemen, another position that is not very well liked. Also during this time, in times of political unrest or economic crisis or plagues, Jews were used as a scapegoat to divert attention from the real issues or they were blamed for these issues. The second type is racial anti-Semitism. This started in the 19th century. In this anti-Semitism, it's not based on religion, but Jews are viewed as a racial group. In this ideology, Jews are biologically inferior, morally corrupt, and are dangerous to society. This ideology was behind the Nazi regime when they committed the Holocaust in which 6 million Jews, men, women, and children were viciously murdered and exterminated systematically. They wanted to completely eliminate the world from the race of Jews. So even if you were converted three generations back or assimilated, it didn't matter. They wanted to completely wipe out any trace of Jewish blood. Even in 1944, when they were losing the war and needed resources at the Eastern Front, they continued to exterminate Jews, uh, specifically Hungarian Jews at that point, and used resources that could have gone to the Eastern Front to continue murdering Jews. The first one who wanted to rid the world completely of the Jewish people, men, women, and children, was Haman in the story of Purim, 
We'll get to that soon. But first, the last type of anti-Semitism, which is the new anti-Semitism. When Herzl, a reporter, is covering the Dreyfus affair in which a French Jew is accused of treason against the French country, he hears the French people screaming outside death to the Jews. And he realizes that this anti-Semitism has to be cured. And he thinks, what can end this anti-Semitism? And he reaches the idea of establishing a Jewish country, a Jewish state for the Jewish people. And that would solve the anti-Semitism problem. But unfortunately, we see that this is not exactly true and anti-Semitism continues to exist. With new anti-Semitism in the 20th and 21st century, it's disguised as criticism towards Zionism and towards the state of Israel. It's one thing to criticize Israel's policy, but you can cross the line when you tie Jewish identity to Israel's policy all Jews in the world are responsible for what's going on, or you can demonize Israel disproportionately or deny Israel's right to exist or any self-determination, call for the annihilation of the Israeli state, right? From the river to the sea, that's an anti-Semitic slogan. You're basically saying we want the state of Israel to cease to exist. Specifically in Muslim countries, we see a lot of the streets are very heated around the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and we see a lot of anti-Semitic rhetoric and a lot of expressions of anti-Semitism, which leads us to Iran and Sinwar, who represents Hamas in Gaza. Why do they hate us? In this case, the Jew hatred is definitely based on religion. We have a long history of Muslims hating us over the centuries. In fact, from the beginning of Islam, Muhammad hated us. Iran are Shiite Muslim extremists. And since 1979, when they had the Islamic revolution in their country, they have a religious government. They want full control in the Middle East. There should be no Western influence in the Middle East, no Western values, only Islamic values and they hate the United States and their Western influence, and they see Israel as a proxy to the United States and hate Israel as well. There is a lot of Holocaust denial going on in Iran, as well as calls to annihilate the Jews and the Jewish country. And when it comes to Sinwar and the Hamas in Gaza, they are extreme Sunni Muslims. They hate Jews and the state of Israel so much that almost all the money coming into Gaza, instead of it going to the wellness of its citizens, was all used for terror infrastructure directed against the state of Israel and the Jews living in Israel. Ironically, I read that plumbing in Gaza is absolutely awful. The beaches are putrid with smell and they have the most massive underground tunnel network whose sole purpose is for terror larger than the London Metro. Hamas, the organization, has called for Israel's destruction and to create an Islamic country in its place. Anti-Semitism is rooted very deep in Gaza. They're finding a lot of books, Nazi literature, anti-Semitic literature, and if they had the chance, they would annihilate the state of Israel and the Jews. The first anti-Semite and the one who wanted to annihilate all Jews is Haman in the story of Purim. Haman was the prime minister of the Persian Empire and he saw that this Jew Mordechai was not bowing down to him and all the other people were and this infuriated him. Now instead of doing what was logical and that's killing Mordechai perhaps, his anti-semitism comes out and he decides to annihilate and kill all Jews, men, women, and children in one day. The way he thinks to do this is to have local anti-Semites doing the job for him and killing the Jews in one day. Haman is a descendant of Amalek. Who is Amalek in the Bible? He's the grandson of Esav, Yaakov's brother. His father is Elipaz, and the Amalek nation are the nation that come from Amalek. On our way out from Egypt, when we 
and the world are in awe by all the miracles that took place, Amalek, the nation of Amalek, come and try to cool us down and without any territorial reason or any specific reason, they come and try to destroy us. The nation of Amalek represents pathological hatred against the Jews and if given the chance, they will completely rid the world of Jews and of any Jewish influence. Malek today is no longer an identifiable nation, but it's an ideology. The ideology of pathological hatred towards Jews and wanting to exterminate Jews. We've seen in history there has been cases where people wanted to exterminate the Jewish nation. Interestingly, I read that anti-Semitism might have caused us to be a stronger community throughout the generations and to have a strong Jewish identity that was kept throughout the years. There is some spiritual or metaphysical law when it comes to anti-Semitism and to our enemies rising against us. We've seen that a lot of times an enemy attacks us when we are not united, when we are weak, specifically when something about our self-identity is not fully developed, and this can cause to make our identity stronger. As much as we try to be like every other country and not to be different, we can't run away from our identity. We are different and we have to accept that we are different. Can anti-Semitism, Jew hatred be cured? Sometimes you think, okay, they just don't know Jews, right? It could be cured. If they just knew Jews personally, knew how much their accusations, whatever they are, are false, if we could explain our logic to them, surely they would understand us. But a large percentage of Jew hatred is without any reason it's baseless hatred even if they think that there's a reason there is some logical reason the palestinian conflict or the jews in the media or something that triggers them so to summarize supposedly there are logical reasons they could be religious they could be racial they could be political it could be because someone a jew didn't bow down to you but behind it is really baseless hatred against the Jews and what they represent in the world. But we know that ultimately good will defeat evil and we as a Jewish people will become more united and our self-identity will strengthen. Wishing you and your families a happy Purim and hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up.